Hi, I'm a fun gal. <laughs> it's a Monday night and it's 10.35 at night and my spouse is working a double shift tonight. And I frequently do cook uh, late in the evening. Uh, if I'm up for it, I, I really like to do it. And I'm making Krautknappen, which is a wonderful rolled, um, it's like a, an egg dumpling dough with sauerkraut and caramelized onions and these are served with the uh, butter sauce and you can have uh, creme fraiche you know or sour cream or applesauce on the side and uh, this is continuing to be rolled and rolled and made thinner and thinner I'm going to put it on some sulfurized paper and roll it out over here when I clear away the clutter and um, I'm going to probably grate by hand some ordinary French Emmental cheese, which is, uh, it's, this is a good brand, because you don't, but, you know, it, it's, it's not, you know, it's, it's mass produced, okay? But it's, it's quite good, it's quite good. Uh, and, um, what I'm going to do is, when this is, is nice and thin, I'm going to put some sauerkraut over uh, cheese first, and then sauerkraut over it, and um, roll it up, and close the ends, and then slice it, and then it will be fried in some butter, just turned once, it will cook rather quickly. And meanwhile, the onions and the, the butter sauce will be nice and hot. And this pot, this is a cocotte, the French uh, Dutch oven, which you have as a staple in nearly every French kitchen. And what you want for your Dutch oven is something with a groove in it or a lid which where you could put ice cubes or something to make trip à la mode de camp and everything and that is to reproduce over a slow low heat um, on the top of the stove the warm hearth and the cold room of a French uh, one-room farmhouse these work fine in the oven they work on top of the stove you could use them for clam bakes uh, in in the fireplace, you know, all kinds of stuff. I'm already on my third or fourth one. That's how long I've been married here in France. And so, since the cocotte is quite cured with caramelizing these onions, I will just take them out with a spatula, put them on the side, and use this same cocotte with the stuff in the bottom, and add more butter, and uh, fry the... Uh, the Krepkelnafen, or whatever they're called. Um, I didn't buy fresh uh, chacrut in the market this time. My spouse got a good deal from this. In fact, we, with the coupon thing or the credits or whatever, we got this for free. And I've looked at this can. I usually get this in the market, and there are different ways you can get it completely vegetarian or you know not and this uh, contains lard lots of juniper berries and um, even a little bit of egg and milk and some whole cumin seeds it's not unusual to find a uh, bay leaf in here and it's cooked in Riesling wine and there, there's way too much here for this recipe. It's a r rather large can, and uh, the the leftovers, you know, I, I just I just put a dish over it and keep it in the fridge for a few days. If you if you're up to it and want to macerate your own stuff, there are some very good recipes. It does take some time, about a month or so, six weeks. But here in France, this is kind of a staple food. And pork is a staple food in France. 
I don't know what everybody's thinking, that the place is overrun with Muslims and everything. You know, uh, most people here still eat pork. It's in the bread. It's in a lot of stuff. It's in a lot of stuff. So if you're strictly vegetarian or you don't eat pork, you may have a problem here. So, um, yeah, as I said, this will be rolled out and some grated cheese will go on it and uh, it will uh, have some kraut, some sauerkraut put over it and it will be rolled and the ends closed and then I may wrap it in sulfurized paper and let it sit overnight because I want to surprise my spouse with this tomorrow. This is a typical dish of, I think it's southwestern Germany, it's Pennsylvania Dutch, and it, there are some Eastern Europeans who do this. You do need a touch of, the only, the, the way I did the, the dough was I didn't measure anything. I just used the last of the wheat flour I had, and I'm gluten intolerant. I, I normally have gluten free flour, but I didn't this time. And, but y y you certainly could. <clears throat> And I, I sort of ran out, so what this is in and what I, you know, made it more dry with is some buckwheat flour. But this sat for a while. The, the dough has to rest a little bit. And all I did was, for this, I broke three um, organic free-range eggs into it. I put a little bit of oil, um, just a small pinch of sea salt. Um, instead of using the grated nutmeg that they recommend, I used quatre piece, which is a little bit of ground clove, ground nutmeg, ground pepper, and ground cinnamon, and it's a French uh, staple spice. And uh, I I worked it around until it was in a ball, and it got kind of elastic, and I, I kept letting it rest, and you just kind of adjust it as you go. Um, you know, it's it's really not difficult. You know, it's really, really not difficult. It's kind of like a jelly roll or a sweet roll, but this one is savory. And that's about it, and it's really comfort food. And the actual cooking um, only takes... I don't know, you know, maybe 20 minutes, you know, 10 minutes on each side until it, it browns. You do have to caramelize the onions in some butter, which means that they should not only wilt and, you know, get translucent and sweat out, but it takes some time and you have to move them around. There aren't that many because this isn't going to be a huge one. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Welcome to my rather cluttered kitchen. And while my spouse is away at the end of the month, I'm going to clean the whole place from top to bottom as I did in February. He got back and didn't say anything, but he was very happy. And I had a couple of chairs recovered. I paid for it with my savings. And uh, I had the windows washed professionally. Again, I paid for it with my savings. So he didn't say anything, but, you know, I think, I think he kind of liked it. Okay. See you later.